Blissful morning everyone. So ang topic natin ngayon ay reflections and implications on psychological treatments that cause harm by Scott O. Lilienfeld. So don't forget na i-click ang link para sa lecture notes and also para ma-download ang certificate for the day with QR code doon na naka-reflect ang ating account na YouTube. The further ado, let's go! Reflections and Implications on Psychological Treatments that Cause Norm by Scott O. Lilienfeld. So, for my reflections, number one, I have come to understand that gaining a deeper comprehension of potentially hazardous therapies, PhDs, should could shed light on the reasons behind unexpected obstacles in psychotherapy. So, we need to say, kailangan talaga malaman din natin yung comprehensive na psychotherapies na may possibility sa hazardous na effects sa ating client. Number two, sa pamagitan ng research na ito, na-discover ko yung potentially hazardous therapies, PhDs, na makakapag-interfere sa natural force ng recovery ng client. Number three, evident naman na in order para ma-minimize yung occurrence ng chance outcomes, so independent investigating teams, kailangan i-replicate nila yung mga findings ng negative consequences associated sa mga potentially hazardous treatments. Number four, importante na consider yung potential harm ng ibang psychotherapy, hindi lamang sa clients, pero sa mga friends din and family members. Minsan kasi, safe sa client, kaya lang, merong mga fabricated claims about abuse sa mga family members. So, kailangan maging aware din as psychotherapists or psychologists ng mga potential broader implication and treatment. So, number five, the definition of therapy-induced injury should harm include harm to others, which emphasizes the need to consider extra scientific considerations such as value judgments about the broader, proper objectives of psychotherapy. This is important because it highlights the need for therapies to take into account not just the immediate impact of treatment on clients, but also their potential impact on others and both their side Values. So, kailangan malaman din dito na yung mga psychotherapies na ginagawa, kailangan malaman din kung may impact ba to sa ibang tao at sa society as a whole. Minsan kasi may mga psychologists or mga researchers na nagpapabricate ng data para lang makita na effective yung isang psychotherapy. Well, in fact, nagkakakosto ng societal na um, problems tsaka problems sa ibang tao. Number six. So, may mga psychological treatments na temporarily mag-cover sa mga nga patients pero effective siya. Meaning to say, may mga psychotherapy na mag papakita ng temporary na worsening ng symptoms. Pero hindi naman ibig sabihin failure yung psychotherapy. Halimbawa sa desensitization. So, sa umpisa, syempre pati-trigger yung anxiety or fear ng pasyente. Pero later on, magkakaroon siya ng successful na therapy kapag nalampasan niya or napagtagumpayan niya ang kanyang fear or phobias or seven. So, as future psychologists na unawaan po na ang unhealthy psychotherapies may, may lead sa pagbaba or pag-terminate ng mga clients or dropouts. So, kailangan yung mga therapists and psychologists mo monitor yung progress ng mga clients and ensure nila na magiging engaged and motivated ang mga clients sa therapy. So, importante din yung client therapies na relationship. Number eight, importante na yung mga dropouts na mga clients ay ma-inote o ma-monitor kasi minsan kaya sila nag-dropout, nag-satisfied sila sa treatment na na-receive. Halimbawa, hindi talaga para sa kanila yung psychotherapy na yun. And okay lang yun kasi pwede silang magpumunta sa ibang psychologist 
And yun na, at this inunote natin, as psychologists, hindi naman talaga lahat ng clients makikater natin ng tama. Meron din talagang hindi aakma sa psychotherapy natin. Yun. Pero maganda pa rin na i- unawain natin na dapat ang ating psychotherapy, tailor feeds up natin. Kaya sabi ko nga, as wise na psychotherapies, hindi lahat mabibigay natin at hindi lahat talaga ay magiging successful sa therapy. Parang mga doctors din yan, may mga fail um, na ano din, cases din, number nine. Based sa reflections ko, naniniwala na akong pure therapeutic kora, kora, collaboration ay nag-predict ng client dropout. So, importante ang strong therapeutic alliance, client, para ma-insure na comfortable yung clients na ka-supported throughout the psychotherapy process. Lastly, so, I have learned na randomly assigning patients sa therapies ay magkakaroon ng high risk ng unethical damage. So, as future psychologists, important din na i-practice yung ethical considerations na ensure mga clients are hindi na puput sa risk ng harm. So, importante na i-weigh yung potential benefits and risk of any intervention bago to introduce sa client. So, implications sa practice ko as future psychologist. So, number one, kailangan ma-report natin yung full range of scores ng dependent variables. So, broken down one into quartile or kahit anong metrics na appropriate. And then, i-report ng mga psychologists or psychotherapists at uh, ito ay dapat mo naman date ng journal editors. Number two, as clinicians, kailan i-weigh natin yung cost-benefit ratio ng intervention na nakapag-improve sa ibang symptoms. However, yung mga ibang symptoms naman ang co-worsen. So, kailangan uh, ma- sa makausap natin yung mga patient natin na may possible deterioration sa kanila. Tapos, magiging successful naman yung therapy based sa progress. Number three, multiple facets na individual's function should be included in the assessment of treatment failures rather than just a decline in target symptoms. Dito, kailangan makita yung iba't ibang facets ng individual functioning kasi pwede mong lumala o nawala yung symptom niya sa isang side. Pero, halimbawa, bumaba yung anxiety niya, pero nagkaroon naman siya ng trauma. So, parang kailangan iba't ibang facets ng patient natin, functioning nila, ay ma-report natin. So, number four. So, eto, in line with number three, para manaman o ma-judge natin kung merong side effects or negative effects. So, kailangan ang mga psychotherapy researchers talaga ay i-complete, disclose ang range ng outcomes ng kanilang therapy. Number five. So, lahat ng information ng psychotherapy at trials ay kailangan fully accessible siya sa journals. So, hindi pwedeng parte-parte lang. So, meaning to say, hahaba yung journal. Pero importante, hindi maging bias, maging objective tayo sa pag-judge ng isang journal. Number six, in bootcamps and wilderness therapy programs, kailangan beneficial sa mga clients kasi merong mga petatis o manamamatay na teenagers. Dahil sa physical violence, physical constraints, na related sa bootcamps. So, merong mga namamatay sa dehydration, pagkalunod, dahil sa process ng treatment programs, ng wilderness programs. Dahil in-expose nila ang mga teenagers sa mga challenging natural surroundings. So, kailangan ethical din talaga yung gagawin nating psychotherapy. At the same time, di realistic, lalo na sa mga dangers na possible na mangyari. Number seven. Naniniwala ako na may urgent need para sa extensive study ng potentially hazardous therapies. At kailangan ka lang, larger com- clinical community, hindi lang limited yung mga participants. Maganda ito sa iba't ibang uh, context, multicultural na studies. Number eight, client deterioration ay minsan predicted siya ng low levels ng therapy swarm and empathy kapag may nasure siya sa psychological test o kaya sa mga therapists mismo, pag nalalaman nila na hindi sila nakapag-perform ng maayos as therapists, may 
client deterioration possible na mangyari. Tapos, kailangan i-monitor yung client therapist relationship. Number nine. The educational and training of mental health professionals such as clinical, counseling, in school psychologists, social workers, counselors, psychiatrists, and psychiatric nurses should incorporate the exposure ng potentially hazardous therapies and other treatments with uncertain efficacy. So, kailangan, hindi nila agad i- o promote mo potentially hazardous therapies, uh, kailangan mag-aralan mo na mabuti kasi mahirap na maging unethical at saka hindi maging beneficial experience. Number 10, the results of this study specifically show that in comparison to control condition with no feedback, so yung tinatrack yung mga clients using standardized questionnaires every session, important yan, tapos uh, magbibigay ng feedback sa clinician, ang clinician regarding sa failure na maka-receive yung clients. Itong mga process na to, nagsisignifically improve therapeutic efficacy. So, meaning to say, para siyang ano, cycle, so, aside from tracking yung client outcomes, pumagita ng standard questionnaires, maganda, nag-feedback din yung mga clients sa clinicians O kaya naman, uh, ang clinician na feedback sa mga clients kung failure ba ang treatment outcome o hindi. Dahil kung fail man, baka meron silang possible na goal or adjustment para ma-improve yung therapeutic efficacy. Thank you so much. So kung may questions kayo, kindly follow me on my social media accounts, especially in YouTube. And also, I will uh, magpapag-giveaway ako ng gold. So, check ko muna yung mga stocks ko. Thank you so much. Have a great day.